in association with Biz News. A very warm welcome to Mags on Media. I think this is episode number three. In uh, this show, the big consultancy Accenture's foray into the world of advertising, I've got this question. Why are these two disciplines drawing closer? How an award-winning agency is taking on 2022. And no, it's not a party, but it's a serious bike race. Cyclists getting ready to tackle the heart of the Tankwa Karoo. But first, uh, a couple of months ago, the first acquisition for Accenture in Africa is the company acquires the highly acclaimed King James Advertising and Communications Group. The move is a big step, I think, in Accenture's plan to drive what is termed experience-led transformation through the notion of creativity. I want to know what is in store for the partnership and the convergence of agencies and consulting companies in general. That interests me. Hayden Townsend is the Managing Director at Accenture Interactive. Hayden, why would a consultancy want to move into this space? Um, you know, you mentioned two things there, Jeremy, the the notion of um, experience transformation and what that looks like. Um, and we talk about end to end, and I'll touch on that briefly. And then um, another key component is using creativity um, in that journey. So the first part is Accenture is, is very good um, at the back office. It's been built on the back office, um, you know procurement, HR, supply chain, operations, very strong in that area. Over the last 10 or so years, led by um, Brian Whipple largely um, on the building of Interactive, was this migration to the front office and to the customer. So getting a lot closer to the customer. Um, that's happened over the last five, six years where we're starting to connect um, back office and front office. And then um, the realization is that driving demand um, and growth. So very efficient um, on the one side, driving down costs, um, but we weren't very active in growing demand and growing revenue. So the transition to moving into more consumer facing technologies and then ultimately into the agency universe as we know it is kind of completing that puzzle, if you may, going end to end and going, we can now do back office, we can do front office and we can drive demand um, on, on, the, on, on the front end. I'll, I'll get to the creative on, side. Let, let's, the, get the the creative, creative, yeah, let's get to the Let's get to the creative side of it. Yep. So, so it's it's been a very interesting um, journey in in the understanding that innovation in business and transformation in business is actually not led from an operational efficiency point of view, but from an innovation point of view. So the understanding that you can build new business models, new ways of fixing old problems, you know, um, complex business problems are typically trying to be solved through rational means. And I think the realization that if we were to apply creativity into complex business problems, we would have a much better opportunity at unlocking the potential in those problems. Now, where are we going to find that creativity? there's no better place than the agency world. Unfortunately, at the moment, the agency world is focusing its creativity on such a sliver of the, of the potential problem slash solution. So the thinking is if we can take brilliant creative minds who are focusing exclusively on communication and then embed them into business problems, we think the outcome could be exponential. And that's effectively where this journey mm. is going. It would seem to me that often that word or that notion of creativity is a very amorphous concept. It's very airy-fairy. How do you mm -hmm. sell the notion of creativity to clients who want hard-nosed business solutions? That, I would suggest, is going to be your problem. Yeah, you see, we... Accenture has been doing it through the term innovation and particularly around technology. So things like, you know, blockchain and the metaverse and um, all of the, the, the classical technology led innovations is where it's been built. Right. And now there's a realization that there is 
a human being attached to it. And I, I say a realization that should sound obvious, but they are consumers at yeah. the end that have feelings and emotions and, and actually connect with storytelling and all of these things that the agency world have been brilliant at for literally centuries now. And we are now looking at bringing these two together to going, technology isn't an end in itself. It's meant to fix a problem, make the world better, transform a business. And then if we connect the technology with creativity, the actual innovation becomes exponential. And that's, um, that's kind of where we are connecting those dots. And you're seeing a lot of it happen, um, you know, if you look at some of the, the agencies that have been in the system a lot longer, like Roscoe in Ireland, you know, if you look at their data-led Grand Prix, whole communications in China, using e-commerce and creativity, um, for KFC. Um, and there are numerous of these examples where we're starting to connect creativity, technology, data, and innovation in a way that's driving business outcomes. And, and the focus is significantly on that part of this journey. We're never going to forego brilliant advertising. It has its place and it is very powerful. I'm not one of the advocates that says advertising is dead. Mm. I think it is very important and will always have a pivotal role to play. But it can't be the only lever that we pull and it can't be the only thing we're focusing on at an agency level. We've got to expand and open the aperture quite significantly. And I think that's why, you know, the, the kind of forward thinking creative agencies, you know, like the Drogas and the King James um, of this world are excited by this opportunity because they've been thinking beyond the screen for a much longer time and never been able to unlock the true value. And I've got numerous cases, you know, as soon as you talk to them, they go like, geez, we had this idea and we could never make it happen or we could never validate the business case or we could never complete the supply chain to make that happen. And now all of these things basically become this massive opportunity in front of all of us. Your difficulty, I would imagine, is going to embed a culture uh, within the organization to make sure that the left brain and the right brain are talking to each other. I'm sensing that internally it might be more difficult than externally. Very much so. Um, you know, having said that, I think for me personally, as, as kind of interactive Africa, we've got a, a few people who have, have walked this journey um, before us, you know, so Fjord almost 10 years ago coming in. And I think if I use Fjord as a, as a, as a, as a kind of proxy for what it could look like and where it could go, we have started embedding design thinking into strategy and consulting. So there's no longer this kind of um, zero-based budgeting approach. Of course, it's still there, but it's not starting from a point of how do we strip out cost. Mm. It's not starting from a point of let's scale the business down. Let's cut this out. It's actually starting from the growth mindset. And now we've got strategy and consulting using, you know, design thinking, like describe, design, deliver, using all of these models that are consumer-led, bringing in research, and you're starting to see the fusion happen. Now, if I use that for where the world could go, that is where we can take the creativity and embed it completely into, into Accenture broadly, because that's the holy grail. That's where success actually rests. If we end up just being an ad agency in the group, we've failed, right? So, if we look at how strategy and consulting has evolved, that partnership between creativity, consulting, innovation is where it sits. Now, from a tech point of view, you're always going to have big system integration, SAP, Oracle, ERP stuff. And we're probably not going to significantly change the technology behind it, but the outcomes and the way we get there would be starting from a very different point. Typically, Accenture could start from a system integration technology point, and now we're starting from a consumer point. So the actual solutions are probably going to be quite different. Hence, all these new technologies, right. the Adobe's and the Salesforce and the Sitecores of the world, becoming more and more important because we're solving for consumer problems. It's not just tech to make procurement better. The power of creativity in solving business problems. Hayden Townsend, thank you very much for joining me. Now, Adland has had a tough 
2021. It's been rough terrain to navigate. My question is, how have advertising agencies overcome the pandemic and the post-pandemic challenges? And maybe more importantly, what's the pivot like for 2022? Uh, Paul Jackson is the chief executive officer of the Gray Group in South Africa, just been awarded the medium size agency of the year at the annual Financial Mail Ad Focus Awards. As far as that's concerned, Paul Jackson, uh, congratulations and well done. I want to start with this, though. Your agency group took its own advice this year. You started to advertise yourselves on billboards, uh, something that the industry doesn't always do. What informed that? Well, absolutely, Jeremy, and I'm glad you noticed them. So th- thanks, <laughs> thanks for, for raising them and, and thanks for mentioning it. Uh, but it's obviously, it's working, obviously, yeah. So as you say, sometimes we don't take our own medicine. Sometimes uh, we don't take our own advice, which is, you know, quite silly sometimes. But uh, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of fun um, doing that. And uh, we've advertised on, you know, by around 50 bulbuls around the country. Um, just to raise the profile of the agency, um, uh, to be frank and to be honest, we took full advantage um, of a lot of the inventory that was available and we sure. thought, um, let's make the most of it. And we had a lot of fun, you know, really getting our message of famously effective out into the market um, and actually taunting some of our competitors and have a little bit of fun with them. And we posted some of those billboards right at their doorstep. Um, which uh, was just a little bit of fun. Yeah, I don't always, think we do enough of that. <laughs> always, always a good strategy. I don't think this year, though, <laughs> Paul Jackson, has necessarily been fun for the advertising and the marketing industry. How tough has it been and how have you had to pivot? Yeah, Jeremy, I mean, I, I think, you know, for all businesses, but, you know, especially our business um, in the, in, and the ad industry, it's, it's one of the industries that really is a, a bellwether for the economy. You know, we usually the first to take the cuts and uh, you know, sometimes the first to feel the benefits of an upswing. Um, when COVID hit, uh, especially uh, with, the, with the lockdowns and, and, and the, uh, the alcohol bans, et cetera, it really hurt a lot of our clients and uh, in, in, in alcohol and automotive and transportation, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all of those industries were, were really badly hit. So, um, yeah, as the ad industry goes, um, you know, we were the first to take those hits. Um, we had to, uh, you know, really a, a align and, and, and make sure that internally we were there to support our staff, number one, um, and then very importantly, support our clients. You know, we all knew that this was going to be a short term um, cut and that we would need to support them. And as long as they came through it, we know that we knew that as the agency, we would come through it as well. And uh, I think that's the key theme for, for us throughout this period has been partnership with our clients uh, and supportive of our people internally at the same time. A lot of brands would have taken a decision to eschew advertising completely. So it does raise the question about how do you convince people that advertising is still relevant, why they still need it, because that's where the debate has gone. Absolutely. And, you know, funny enough, this period has actually been almost like a little experiment. It's actually uh, proven the efficacy of advertising. And And I'll cite you one or two examples. We've seen some of our clients that have, cut budgets um, have really battled to come back when the upswing in spenders has started to occur. Um, Another client of ours, a very good example, is the Savannah Cider um, uh, brand actually has been spending throughout COVID and throughout the alcohol bans and lockdowns. And they're probably one of the most impacted um, by the government restrictions. And we've seen literally their, their, their sales and market share double, you know, double in the past 12 months. And that just goes to show that you if you back and you support your brands um, in periods where your competitors are pulling back, you can take share, you know, so it works. Advertising works and, uh, you know, we're very proud of, of the work that we do and uh, the effect that it has on, on our clients' businesses. Paul Jackson, I've just had a very interesting conversation with Hayden Townsend from Accenture, and uh, you'll be aware of the merger with the King James Agency in Cape Town. He was talking to me about the power of creativity, yes. not just in communication, but to solve broader business problems. Do you think that's where your industry inevitably has to go to, that it's not just about communication, but it's right across the value chain? Jeremy, without a doubt, and it's not where it has to go. It's there already, to be frank. You know, the the 
um, the descriptor, uh, you know, uh, uh, being in the advertising world is a bit of a misnomer. You know, we're in the creative business. You know, if we're not applying creativity to solve our clients' business problems, then you're not really in this industry. So we're applying our creative minds every day in different ways, you know, not just in communications, but in marketing terms as well. Um, you know, when we had those first lockdowns, um, you know, we had to pull the comms on many of the brands um, during the period, especially comms that showed groups of people socializing all around alcohol. Um, but at the same time, you know, people were out of jobs. So one of the creative solutions we came up with was a virtual comedy bar uh, for Savannah, where we, we backed comedians who were out of work. Um, and we created a virtual platform for them um, to, to really display their comedy and, and connect with fans. And it was hugely successful, so much so that, that, that Comedy Central has picked it up. And, um, you know, that, that theme of creativity being used to solve business problems and everyday social issues is something that's pervasive and happening across the continent, which really makes for, for a wonderful future for our industry. Um, and for Africans in general, you know, to in, apply their ingenuity to solve some of the toughest uh, challenges that our, our continent and our people face. As far as your industry is concerned, what's the outlook for 2022? Is it going to be a little easier, do you think? Well, Jeremy, I, I, we've had everything thrown at us in the last 24 months. I mean, I, I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm in a nightmare at, um, at business school and, uh, you know, the lecturers are sitting there rubbing their hands together thinking, what can we throw, you know, these guys next? And, uh, I think we've been through, we've been through it all, you know, and, uh, you know, from riots to, to lockdowns to alcohol bans, you name it. Um, so I think we've come through it quite resilient. In fact, we've come through it with growth. Uh, we are expecting and really are feeling a, a very positive uptick in the economy and in spend. I think you can start seeing some of the media spend levels starting to get back to 2019 levels. Um, so we're quite optimistic for the new year. I think we've got a lot of pent up demand. People have got savings. They've got money to spend. They want to travel. They want to get out and about. Um, and after any big recession or post-war uh, kind of period, you do see this revival in spend and activity. And um, I'm quite optimistic and hopeful that we're going to experience that certainly in the, in the new year. And uh, we're well primed to, to take advantage of that. I, I certainly hope that that's the case. Um, final question for you, Paul Jackson. Given that we have a predominantly business audience, what questions should clients in 2022 be asking of their ad agency? Well, I think, you know, it, it's not so much of the ad agencies, is it? but it's really of the consumers, you know, and, you know, the ad agencies can help solve those problems. But what is it that consumers are wanting, needing, desiring, you know, in this post-COVID um, um, period? You know, if their desire is to be out and about and to experience new things, you know, how can we as brands um, enable that and what can support can the agency provide that so it's always got to come back to what our, our consumers are asking of us um, and they're looking for new experiences and they're looking new ways to connect with people um, you know they're tired and I think a little bit jaded with the, this lockdown period and want to get out and about and and start experiencing life again and enjoying life um, obviously in a in a restricted environment and uh, you know how can we as brands and companies facilitate that and make sure that we deliver that and those that do those that are on the front foot and those that are proactive about it um, will definitely see the benefit um, you know, from their activities. Going to leave it there. Paul Jackson, Chief Executive Officer of the Grey Group in South Africa, thank you very much for joining me. Now, as we end the year, I want to move away briefly from the pure business of uh, branding and marketing. And I think it's fair to say there's a fresh news cycle every day. It isn't often that we get a fresh cycling event that is in the news. The Tankwa Kuru Bicycle Race is a two-day cycling event covering, I'm told, something in the region of 170 kilometers of the Tankwa Kuru. I've got with me founder Jeremy Crowder, who calls it a visceral and real experience, a lot more than your regular mountain biking excursion. Jeremy, how does this differ from the Cape Epic that we know so well? Um, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. So I think um, what we've done uh, with the with this race is we've we've toned down the competitiveness to start with. Um, so the timing is very different to a traditional race. Um, we have segments 
and um, riders will collect points. What this does is it offers um, your serious and very fit riders to ride uh, the majority of the race with, with their friends. Um, and then when a section starts, um, that's when the real racing uh, gets, gets going. The second thing is this unique location, which is the Tanqua Karoo. Um, and millions of years ago, it used to be an inland sea. And um, as a result, the landscape is, is completely different. I've built this race with the modern day gravel bike um, in mind. So essentially, it's a, it's a road bike um, with, slight, with slightly um, wider tires on it. And this race is very uh, untechnical. Um, there's no ramps or jumps or single tracks. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a flat out race. Um, so the difference, the main difference is, is, is the Cape Epic. So um, it's a week long, this mm. is a two day bicycle race. Um, and our first day is, is, is about 115 Ks and our second day is 55 Ks. I'm, I'm interested to know, the, Jeremy, um, why the, the, the refreshment. Sorry, finish, finish your sentence. Yeah, so I think, um, secondly, the, uh, the, the refreshment stations that we've got as well. Um, it's a bit of a restaurant that we set up in the middle of nowhere. Um, there's no sports drinks or sugary sweets or that kind of thing. We've got charcuterie, real fruit, um, real food, um, tequila and beers um, for those um, that, um, that want to get started. Um, so, yeah, we've really tried to focus on the value and the experience around the ride as opposed to just a flat-out race. I'm interested to know why the broader sport of off-road cycling has found such traction. And I use that word carefully, as I know the traction is often a problem in this type of cycling. But all of a sudden, uh, it, it's, it's become hugely popular. Why is that? Yeah, so I think as South Africans, you know, we are outdoorsy people. And um, I think, you know, we've seen a real uptick um, post-lockdown as well. I think people... Uh, have taken, or previously before lockdown, have taken, um, you know, freedom and going outdoors and having fresh air for granted. And I think that's come to an end now. I think as well, you know, cycling is a, is a huge stress reliever um, and it gets people out to, to, to connect. Um, uh, you know, it's said that we've got almost 500,000 kilometers of gravel road in mm. South Africa. So there's a huge amount to explore. Um, and I think, yeah, it's just about getting out and living a healthy lifestyle. And I think that's only going to get stronger and stronger. Let me bring the conversation back to the uh, raison d'etre of this program, and that is brands and branding. We know that the Cape Epic has done wonders for the ABSA brand. Um, what's the opportunity as far as your event is concerned? So we we, we had our inaugural event in, in May this year with zero sponsors. Um, you know, I think it was first a challenge to, um, to myself to put a race together. It still makes a profit um, without um, the resources from a sponsor. I think what, what ABSA and Cape Ethic have done really well is it's a long-term partnership. It forms a fundamental part of ABSA's marketing plan. And I think, you know, it really is the, um, um, the badge of success there. For us, um, for me, I've been quite picky on, on, on sponsors as well. Um, unless a sponsor can add real value to the rider, and I don't mean by putting a sample sachet in a plastic <laughs> packet. Um, I'm talking about um, in making the experience go a, a lot further. Um, you know, so I'll be looking this year for, uh, for, for um, little brands um, within the Karoo area. You know, there is a, there's a, there's a, cheese maker down the road. There's beer guys making craft beer down the road. Um, and it's those kinds of things that I'll, I'll be looking at to really just uplift the rider's experience as opposed to just cycling in a race. And that's where we are going to leave it. Jeremy Crowder, thank you very much uh, for joining me. There will be more Mags on Media on Biz News next week. You'll find us on Biz News TV on YouTube. Thank you so much for engaging.